Hello and welcome to the Investors Real Estate Radio Show. I am your host, Kevin Mills, and I am here every day for a half an hour, give or take, to share my real estate experiences and to answer any of your questions. So if you have questions related to real estate, whatever they may be and whatever uh, situation you're in, even if you are wanting to just get started or if you are a seasoned investor and you have some questions, uh, feel free to send those questions to me via email. You can send those to contact at kevinmillsnow.com. That's contact at kevinmillsnow.com. I will get to as many of those questions as possible uh, on the show send those messages to me. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow, but as soon as I can get to those questions, I will try to answer them. Uh, A lot of times those questions are the same as others. So listen for your question. It may be from somebody else, but it will be the same question. Uh, Let's jump right into it today. I want to talk about what I think is obvious when you are looking for real estate investment, but a lot of people that is not what they're looking at, and they should be uh, when they're looking at the real estate investment. Too many investors set out looking for a property that they can get for below market value. They want to bid as low as possible for the property in order to acquire that property. Now, I understand this, and and I'm going to be the first person to tell you, never spend any more money than you need to to purchase anything, whether it's real estate, an automobile, or your pizza. If you can get a discount, if you got a coupon for your pizza, whatever it is, uh, absolutely, money saved is money earned. However, so many investors make that their only criteria for investing in a property. And they are losing out on so many opportunities and the potential for for great investment by not looking at the real reasons why we are investing in real estate and the real reason to invest in real estate and the the, the thing that we want to look at. And that is your ROI, return on investment. Now, yes, if you get the property for less, you will ultimately have a better return on investment. However, there are properties out there in markets that you can purchase even at asking price that will give excellent ROIs. A couple of the areas that, that I look at for investing, you can get easily, and this is in the Orlando area, for example, easily 20 to 24, 25% return on investment on a market priced property. Uh, I invest in Cleveland. I love investing in Cleveland. I get 50 to 75% return on my investment annually in Cleveland. I will buy a property straight off the MLS for asking price and still get 50, 75% or even greater annual returns on my investment. So my question to those of you who are still thinking that you have to get the property for the best amount of money. If I am trying to lowball that seller and somebody else comes in like me, who's going to make a full price offer or an offer that's just slightly less than what they're asking, who's going to get that property? I'm going to get that property or the, or the buyer who is getting as close to the asking price as possible is going to get that property. The person who is trying to lowball that seller is going to take longer to acquire that property. I have seen people go back and forth for a month on trying to agree on a price I would rather spend that month having paid for the property, closed on it, and start putting tenants in it and start cash flowing. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't cut your own throat. Don't tie your own hands thinking that the strategy you need to use for real estate investing is the buy low, sell high strategy. That strategy is so played out. Uh, So many real estate gurus 
charge thousands of dollars just to tell you you need to buy low, sell high. We learned that in junior high economics. There are no magic strategies that will make you do this. I know they're going to tell you that they can tell you how to do it. All they're going to tell you is keep doing it, keep doing it, keep doing it until you find somebody who is going to sell you their property for less than what you can turn around and sell that property for. That's a lot of work. I I myself am not interested in putting in that much time, that much effort, that much work. I would rather sit at my computer, look at the properties that are submitted to me every day by uh, property owners, uh, investors, real estate agents in the various markets where I invest, and then say, I'll take this one, this one, this one, and this one, and write the checks and get the properties going, put my property manager on it to start getting tenants if there's no tenants already. To me, that is a easier way of making my investment profits than having to knock on doors and beg and plead and go back and forth trying to get somebody to take less than what they want for their property. I can offer somebody what they want for their property and they're happy to sell me their property. I am happy because I am going to be making good income from the property. Like I said, in Orlando, uh, as much as 24%. In Cleveland, 50 to 75% or greater. I can't tell you guys, and if you listen to me on a regular basis, you already know this. I love Cleveland. I know you probably feel like I I say Cleveland too much, but I love Cleveland. Uh, Now, that's going to bring me to my next segment in this particular show. Uh, I tell you guys areas that are great, areas that I like to invest in. But I also want to augment that by providing some words of caution. I have run into very many people who have invested in markets that I have recommended that I myself have great success in. And they have had phenomenal failures. That is because not every neighborhood in Cleveland is a good investment. That is because not every neighborhood, not every property in Orlando is a good investment. You need to understand the market where you are going to be investing. If you're not familiar with the Orlando area, if you're not familiar with which properties are going to provide what types of returns, what neighborhoods and what areas are more sought after than others, don't invest in Orlando. If you don't understand what neighborhoods to purchase, what neighborhoods not to purchase in, in Cleveland, if you don't understand what strategies for finding tenants for your properties and for finding management for your properties, don't invest in Cleveland. It can go south very, very fast if you purchase the wrong property or use the wrong strategy in any market that you are not familiar with. So my recommendation to you, when you hear me talk about these markets, if you're not in these markets, okay, you have a number of different options. You can find someone who is familiar with that market that you trust and work with them. And I mean, you need to trust this person. You need to trust not only that they have your best interest in mind, but that they actually know what they're talking about. Not just about the market, but about finding tenants for your property, about finding property management for your property, about understanding the market and knowing what to do next in that market. If you can find that person in that market, work with them. If you are absolutely in love with a market and you want to invest in that market, and I have had students who have done this literally in in various cities where we've done real estate buyers events. I have had students who have moved to Dallas or purchased a place in Dallas in order to spend more time there. Same thing with Cleveland. Same thing with Space Coast in Florida. Uh, Same thing with Sarasota, Florida. I have had students who have literally 
put the time in in those markets so that they could better understand those markets so that they could invest in those markets and maximize their investments and not lose money, not get taken advantage of, not be upside down on their investments because they were able to understand and know the market. A lot of people are not in a position to where they can do that. If you are not in a position to where you can just drop everything and move to another market for a year or so and understand that market, then you need to look at other options. Now, I also want to preface this just while I'm thinking about it, not necessarily related, but a lot of students of mine that have moved from places like Southern California to Dallas, uh, Research Triangle in the Carolinas, uh, Space Coast, even to uh, Cleveland, have loved those markets so much that they decided to make those markets their home. They literally ended up selling their home in New York City or Los Angeles or San Diego or San Francisco or a different city and made those new markets their home. Uh, they liked what was going on there better than where they were. And it wasn't just because of the investing opportunities. It was because there was just more going on for them. They felt more in touch with the people there, with the market, with, with what was going on there. So keep in mind, uh, maybe it's a warning for some of you, if you do relocate and that's something that you're considering, keep in mind that it is a very real possibility that you're going to fall in love with the market where you are going. And, and that's not a bad thing. I think that's uh, actually, actually a good thing because it means you have found someplace that you are comfortable. If you weren't comfortable where you were before uh, and you find a place that you like being, uh, that's great. I myself recently moved from Southern California. I moved to South Florida because it's an area that I enjoy. It's an area where I spend a lot of time already anyway, and I felt comfortable here. And I have to tell you, making the commitment to living here uh, has, has made me feel a lot more at peace, has made me feel a lot more happier than I was when I was in California dealing with all the politics and everything else that were going on in California. So consider it a potential side effect of getting to know a different market. You may end up liking that market for more than just investing purposes. I want to go a little more into other ways that you can comfortably jump into another market. Uh, for example, I do a real estate buyer's event and I have decided as of 2020 to focus our real estate buyers events in Cleveland, just because right now there are very few markets that have a 50 to 75% and greater annual ROI potential. Uh, of all of those markets that have that kind of potential, Cleveland is the one I am most familiar with. I have been investing in the Cleveland market for about 35 years. I know the market inside and out, and I love investing in Cleveland. So instead of taking investors groups to other markets that have the same types of ROIs potentially, that I just don't have the same presence and I, I, I'm just not comfortable doing that. So we have real estate courses that we're doing in other markets such as Orlando uh, and Miami and Dallas and other markets. We will even do real estate courses in Los Angeles, Chicago, San Francisco, New York City. These are markets where I do not invest. However, there are investors there and they want to know how to invest in those markets. Uh, I am happy to impart my knowledge and share the education that I put together with them. Uh, I see people in Los Angeles struggling, sorry, struggling over 
three, four, five percent profits on their their investments. And to me, that's just crazy. And I have talked myself blue trying to talk these people into investing in other markets. And they just are not interested because they want to invest in the market where they are. And that is their choice. If they are happy investing and getting 3%, 4%, 5%, doing backflips if they're getting 10%, then then so be it. Whom I to tell them that that's the wrong strategy for them. For whatever reason, that's the strategy they're focusing on. I would rather they understand everything that goes into making an investment, everything that goes into running the numbers and everything that goes into safeguarding themselves so that they don't have any of those bad surprises in that investing chance that they're taking rather than sit there and say, you know what, I'm sorry, I'm done with you because you're only getting 3% or you're only getting 5% or you're only getting 9% and I'm getting 50 and 75% out of other markets. However, for people who do want to invest in markets like Cleveland, I do a Cleveland real estate buyers event. Now, I love investing in other markets as well. I have decided literally as of the last couple of years that most of my investments are going to be focused in Cleveland. That's my real estate investments. Uh, I am investing in other things, other businesses in South Florida, especially since I just moved here and other markets as well. I am very familiar with the Florida market because I invested in Orlando for years and years and years. I invested in Space Coast and Gulf Coast and the Miami area for for decades. And as a result, I am very familiar. It is not a bad place to invest. You can get, like I said, 15 to 25% even 30% in some of the areas in Florida from your investments. But without trying, I can get 50 to 75% in Cleveland. What I'm getting at is if I'm doing a real estate course and you happen to live in Orlando and we're doing the course in Orlando, I am going to share all of my information on Orlando with you. Uh, If you are in Miami, I'm going to share that with you. If you are in Dallas, another area where I spend lots and lots of time and have done lots of investing, I'm going to share everything that I know about the Dallas market and the areas around Dallas. Texas is a great place to invest, even still. Uh, And I love Dallas out of all the cities to invest in, in in Texas. I love Dallas the most for investing. When it comes to Cleveland, for example... I have almost 35 years of experience investing in Cleveland. So for our real estate buyers event, I will introduce you to the same real estate agents, the same property managers, the same lending finance people that I have worked with for years. They come in, they meet with you, they answer your questions, they tell you about the market. It's not just me. These are the types of connections you need in whatever market you are going to invest in. Now, this holds true for your home market as well as a different market. So let's say you decide you don't want to invest in the market where you live. You want to invest in another market because there are better returns or because you like it for this, that, or the other reason. Florida was recently, I don't know if you can say voted, but recently statistics showed that Florida is the fastest growing state in America. It exceeded Texas last year. So there are lots of opportunities in Florida for growth. And a lot of people love the weather here. You may decide that you want to invest in Florida and eventually move to Florida, but you don't live in Florida right now. You need those types of contacts, that type of information in that market. Let's say you live in New York City, and you want to invest in New York City because you live in New York City. And I understand that. You need real estate agents that are going to put the types of properties that you want, and you need to decide what those are. 
Okay. You need to laser focus on what that's going to be. You want real estate agents that are going to put those properties in front of you, uh, whether it's an email or you sit down with them once a week over lunch, you want those properties so that you can take a look at them as quickly as possible and decide whether or not that scenario is going to work for you. You want property managers that are familiar with the types of tenants, the types of strategies you want for those buildings. And when I when I say this, this holds true for residential and commercial. So whether you have a residential, a commercial, or an industrial property, and, and people like investing in different things. Most of my properties have been residential. I have, however, invested in commercial properties. And if I found the right industrial scenario, I would invest in industrial again. But you need to be familiar with with the types of properties that you want to invest in. Your property manager needs to be familiar with what your strategies are and be able to find the tenants that meet the requirements that are going to work with your strategy. You also need lenders that are going to understand what your situation is. And when I say your situation, how you choose to purchase the property. Now, purchasing a residential property is different than purchasing a commercial property, different than purchasing an industrial property. Those challenges change with each type of property. Your situation and how you like to purchase those properties is also unique to you. Uh, A lot of investors think that they want to be able to do as much creative financing as possible. But in reality, many investors come to the table with 20% down on a residential property. They come to the table with more down on a commercial or an industrial property because they know it's going to be easier terms. That means that they're going to pay less in interest and they're going to get the deal done easier with less headache and with less heartache. However, whatever it is, whatever your strategy is, you need to find lenders, investor lenders that are going to understand that and know how to work with that and know how to get you funded so that you can start getting yourself into those properties, start putting your property manager to work and getting you tenants and start cashing checks. So let's kind of recap in our last few minutes. And maybe we've gone full circle here. We started off by saying that what we are looking for as investors is our return on investment. That is big picture. Most people are looking at small picture, which is acquiring the property for as least amount of money as possible. Now, yes, that will help your bottom line, but that isn't the only way to get into a property quickly with a good ROI. So look at your big picture. Don't just get a property because you can get into it easy. What kind of ROI, annual ROI, return on investment, that is how much money you are making against the amount of money you invested in that property. That's your down payment or your purchase price uh, and any rehab or fix up or anything else that you've done in that property. What is your return on that investment? That is what we're looking at. Then understanding the market where you're going to invest and not just understanding the market, but understanding the types of properties that you want to focus on, the types of strategies, the types of tenants, everything that you want to focus on and having boots on the ground that are going to support those efforts for you. That is what is going to set you apart from others. If you have that team and you're looking at these numbers, this is going to be your success strategy. Too many investors, they're not looking at the whole picture. They're not looking at the big picture. And because of that, they're picking the wrong investments uh, or they're just failing outright. We don't want that to be us. So Going into all of this, everything that you do, big picture, today's lessons, okay, ROI. And I told you I wanted you to get a piece of paper and a pencil ready. I want you to do some math 
for me. And here's where you can get that paper and pencil out. At least write down these numbers. Let's say you have $50,000 to invest. I want you to take that $50,000 and I want you to put it into a couple of different columns. So we talked about the central Florida area where you can get about 25% uh, if you look return on investment annually from your investment. So if you invested 50,000 in central Florida at 25%, what will your returns be at the end of the year? And on $50,000, that shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Take that same return, put it back into your portfolio and just keep putting it back into the portfolio over and over and over again for 10 years at the same return rate, 25%. And again, we're not going to have time for this while I'm on the air, but look at those numbers. Now let's take Cleveland, for example, where we're getting 50 and 75%. So take that 50,000 and apply 50% return annually to that 50,000. That means you're making $25,000 a year. Put that $25,000 back into your real estate portfolio. Okay. Don't take any of it out. Just put that back in for the sake of doing numbers and calculate your 50% on that over and over and over and over again. I want you to do the same thing with 75%. For Cleveland, because you can get 75% easily in Cleveland as well. So do the same thing, 50%, sorry, 50,000 with a 75% return. Keep putting that money back in over and over and over and over again for 10 years. At 75%, and you're going to see this in, in, in 50% also, but at 75%, you're going to see that around seven years, you're going to have over $5 million worth of properties in your portfolio, you are going to have over a million dollars worth of equity in those properties, and you're going to have over a million dollars cash in your pocket every year from that $50,000 investment just seven years ago. At 50%, you're talking about nine years. At 25%, you're talking something close to, it's 15 years. This is why our return on investment is so important. The greater return on investment, the more our money works and builds for us. I would rather have a million dollars in my pocket every single year after seven years, eight years, from a $50,000 investment than having to wait 15, 16, 17 years at 25%. So consider all of this when you decide where you want to invest. If you need me, I'm here. If you have questions, send them to me. Contact at kevinmillsnow.com. I'll talk to you next time. Until then, happy investing.